Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you folks doing today? Sorry for the late start. I'm still fighting with this internet thing. This is crazy. So it might work, um, might not. I've got the Comcast tech coming out on Thursday was the earliest they could come. So it looks like we're almost stable. Good morning. Hope you guys have your coffee. Cheers. Yeah, hydration. Thank you. Yep. Oh man. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's wrong. So they think there might be a problem with the line, but I don't I don't know. Oh <laughs> so they're VODs. Alright. Yeah, when it came out, I think it was okay. They did a bunch of resets and sent a bunch of things yesterday. It was pretty stable. And then it just like randomly pauses. I feel like it's not my cable, but maybe it is. I don't know a whole lot about that. So, you know, we'll have to go figure that out. Um, so someone will come out tomorrow and hopefully they'll fix it because this is just sad. All this, the pausing and whatnot. Let's see. How's it going? Let me refresh this. So, and on Monday, we took a break. And then, best I can tell, it didn't register that I came back after break. It just died. Um, so that was fun. Because I spent another little bit of time, not too long, but a little bit of time after break, apparently talking to nothing. So, you know, there's that. So let's take a look at our controls example. Alright, come on, that means. Maybe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little sad. I feel like it should go a little faster. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to put... You chat on my phone, I guess. <laughs> it always looks like that when I open it for whatever reason. It is it gets confused easy. Alright, let's see. Let's see if I can get chat here on my phone, save some a little bit of CPU. Put that over here. Alright. We're stable ish. See how well that works. Yeah, look at that. It's just uh just sitting there. I'll close that one. Ooh, my anti malware service. That's eating up a bunch of CPU. Uh, antivirus is the worst. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Come on, maybe. Can't even get chat to load on my phone. Maybe. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. I got this other project to close. Let's close this one.
Maybe. Do not know how to do that. <laughs> it forgot to do JavaFX. Oh my goodness. NetBeans hates me today. There it goes. All right, scene builder. All right, and open. Maybe it'll open scene builder for me. One of those days, folks. Nothing. All right, I'm gonna close it and open it again, because that's that's the trick. Hey, it's opening faster at least. That's a good sign. All right, I lied about it opening fast. So what else is new, chat? While well, this loads. There it goes. Maybe. All right, that looks promising. Scene builder, hooray. All right, so we went through and we added radio buttons for each checkbox for coffee, for espresso, and tea. Um, milk tea is actually not too bad. NVIDIA makes CPUs, Dusty? Neat. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, that's neat. So they're going to compete with Intel and AMD? That's actually pretty exciting. All right, so we, we added these radio buttons and we set their visibility to off to start. And then what we did in the code is we said, hey, when this gets checked, I want to turn them on. We said, hey, when uh, we, oh, where is it here? There, when we click the coffee button, when the coffee checkbox is clicked, it's going to set its radio buttons to be visible based on whether or not it is selected. So if it's selected yes, they'll be visible true. If it's selected unchecked, no, it's not selected, they're going to be set visible to false. So they're going to show up and disappear and show up and disappear and show up and disappear. And we did that for each of the coffee, the espresso, and the tea. It's a little bit tedious, but not too bad. Uh, pun intended there for tea. Okay. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Got a little extra space there. And then we needed to fix our uh, with milk, got milk methods here because right, each one needs to look. So coffee, if there's coffee, espresso, if there's espresso milk, tea, if there's milk in the tea, that sort of thing, we were adding those in here. Okay? So each one of them then said we would put with our skim milk, with our whole milk, with our soy milk, or with our coconut milk. So when we ran it, we should have gotten a nice receipt printed out. And then we also added a total. So if I wanted coffee with some whole milk and espresso with soy milk and maybe tea with no milk, and we'll buy a bagel as well. So coffee with whole milk, espresso with soy milk, tea, nothing because we wanted no milk, bagel, and then a total cost. And then our Right, the checkout button is what would trigger this label here. So if I change some of these things, we should see that they show up correctly. Whole milk, soy milk, a donut. Okay. We're just working on getting all those registered when we hit our buttons. Okay, and I think what we added after we came back from break was adding this cost thing here. And then if we wanted, right, these 
milk options we could also add some money and that might be interesting right we could do something like that now to do that though what we need to do because total cost only exists right now inside my checkout clicked method that's its scope right remember where we declare it determines its scope and the scope determines where you can access it so instead we can make a class level attribute so right now all of these class level variables are this tagged fxml because they come from the xml fxml config right so it all comes based on what we've put in scene builder okay so we can also add though because it's just a class we can add our own class level variables so i can have a double for total cost declared here and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to reset it Mm, so setting to zero is not actually going to work very well, is it? Because, well, you know, it might. Because when these methods will get called, and it should add. This should work. We'll try it. So we're going to set it to zero, and then we're going to start adding the total cost for the items checked. And then as we use these got milks methods here, we can add total cost. So we can say, okay, soy milk then is total cost what plus equals what what do they charge like 50 cents for soy milk or something like that and maybe 50 cents for coconut milk but whole milk and skim milk will be free sure why not so it's soy milk's 50 cents coconut milk is 50 cents soy milk's 50 cents coconut milk's 50 cents okay let's see if we can get a little extra charge here now for those milks so coffee with soy milk then is a dollar with skim milk it's a dollar uh oh did i miss it oh oh so our total cost goes up right total cost goes up but the dollar amount for the coffee doesn't change so we're not really adding that to the receipt very well are we well, it's not really showing it there because we want to like show that there's the extra charge. Hmm. See if we could add that in here. I think if we add it on, I think maybe I don't know, like in a parentheses or something. I think that'll I'll show them something like plus. 50 cents. What do you think? Let's take a look, see how that looks. I mean, this is just, can we make this look halfway decent and figure it out? Well, my total coffee amount's still wrong, but now my total amount is better. Versus skim milk or no milk. That's not too bad, right? So I'm going to take this and we'll just paste it in on top over here. There we go. Still feeling a little bad. We have pretty much the same logic three times, but it's not, not too much we can do about that at the moment. Okay. So we could also change the coffee cost and have that be a variable that could be modified inside of here if we wanted. That's another option, is we could have each of them make a... Oh, I kind of like that. That's kind of fun. So we could have a double for coffee cost, a double for espresso cost, and a double for... Oh, espresso cost, espresso, and a tea cost. And if we declare them here, then we can set them all. So my coffee cost zero, my espresso cost zero, my tea cost zero. Man, I don't want to hit that other O there, do I? Espresso cost. So we'll say the coffee cost. Actually, they also uh, so coffee started at a dollar, espresso started at two dollars, tea started at a dollar fifty. There we go. 
and we'll add to those individual ones there. I like that. That's more fun. Espresso cost and the tea cost. We'll have to add the coffee cost here instead. Oh, our strings are getting really ugly here, though, but that's okay. That's okay. So our coffee cost, and then our dollar sign. That's the espresso cost. Plus that one. And then our tea cost. Tea cost. Plus the new line. Okay. So then each of these then can change instead of, instead of total cost, it will add, this one is our coffee cost. And maybe we'll still put in this here, like as with the extra 50. We'll see. Let's see how well that looks. This is my espresso cost. Right, so this idea is just, it's just another class. We just get some of it is generated for us. So we kind of mix and match with our variables and the fxml variables to see if we can get what we want. All right. So, coffee. Soy milk, espresso, coconut milk, tea, skim milk. Cool. We're getting there. So maybe our labels then should say how much they cost. Would, would that be... Would that make more sense than instead of trying to put it in our receipt printer here? I got chat over here. It's, it's weird. I used to have it... Up. I can't... I should just put my phone up here, right? So you watch chat. Or maybe now the stream manager will behave. Now that my CPU is not going crazy. Let's try that. Let's see if I can open Stream Manager again. Look at that. It just eats resources right away. Isn't that fun? 50%? Just open up Edge? Oof. Oh, but look. Now I can write emotes, though. It's worth it. Okay. 20% just sitting watching my stream. So apparently there's a way I can do this in the, this new OBS. I can put the chat here. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. So that's pretty exciting. And then I can just have it in my stream manager OBS window here and not have to have Edge open monitoring all that stuff. All right. Anyway, so we were playing with our receipt here. Yeah, we should probably put these costs in the menu. So let's come back to scene builder. Then we need to add those items here, right? So coffee, Wait, was what? One dollar espresso was two dollars. Oh, and that is not wide enough. My goodness, can we make that V box? There we go. Look, we can make the V box a little bigger. That was just dragging this vertical box that we've been jamming everything in here. T was a dollar fifty for some reason. Why not? And then a bagel. What did we say a bagel was? $1.25? Maybe? Where'd it go? Somewhere in here. Let's see. Check out. So this bottom left is handy. It shows you all your methods here. Bagel, 75 Donut, $1.25. $7.50. And then donut. $1.25. Oh, I missed a dash. I was doing dashes everywhere else. Might as well be consistent. Oh, I missed it in T as well. All right. Cool. So we got all that. And then if we wanted, then we could add those like 50 cents for soy milk and skim milk here. Right? We could add that in here. Plus... 50 cents. Do you think that, that makes sense to show that on our label display there? Oops. Coconut milk plus 50 cents. All right. Well, I'm just going to do it to coffee and we'll see how well we like that. 
So all we do is change the label. So we don't need to go regenerate the controller. The only time we need to generate the controller is if we've changed, if we've added items to it, or we've added handlers or that sort of thing. The, the look of it itself and the objects inside of it are going to get picked up just fine. We don't actually check anything else there. Toggle groups. Okay. So it's warning me that we're not doing things, but we're good. We're good. So we'll stop this one and let's relaunch. See what we get. All right, cool. So coffee shows up and then soy milk, 150 cents. Okay, that's a halfway decent looking receipt. Espresso, coconut milk, sure, 250 there. Yeah, I like that. So adding, putting it in a little note there, I think makes a lot of sense. I kind of like that. Okay, so let's go add it to the rest of them here then. So soy milk. Plus 50 cents. I'm just going to copy this because I keep writing that every time. And that's silly, isn't it? Don't write it more often than you need to. Soy milk. 50 cents. Coconut milk. 50 cents. All right. So we added those in. So the, the rest of them will have their labels here in a minute. Once we reload that. Make sure I save. Control S save. Okay, it looks like it's already saved. Let's see what we get. All right, so coffee, espresso, tea, bagel donut. Cool, if that's some expensive milks, milk substitutes. Add them in. Price went up. Go back to no milks. Price goes back down. Cool. So our formatting's a little bit off here with those doubles, which is okay. We can fix that. Remember we did we did double formatting. How long ago was that now? Way, way long ago. Does that ring the bells where you do a, a format? Let me, uh, let me make sure I'm not going crazy here. Grab our course repository here. Love that I can just search this here. So it's a format. Yeah, here we go. It's in chapter three, part two. Okay. Ah, oh, with print F uh, and string format. So we're not printing anything. So print F isn't going to work. So string dot format is the better way to go about this right and you can put in these little percent versions here percent point two f for a floating point number okay so we can do all that in our our receipt it's getting a little long but that's okay we don't mind we don't mind so and actually if we're formatting here we go we can we can do all this in a single line here instead. So we're gonna say string dot format is coffee plus a string here, right? Or you put in we do braces? No, it's string percent s string dollar percent point two f floating point number and then a new line and then coffee got milk and coffee cost. Like that, so we'll take our label text. We'll add to it the nicely formatted string version here. That's not too much, too much longer, right? Remember this format, it, you take a single string and it's just gonna start substituting in everywhere over these percent signs. Okay, so in our label text, it's equals uh, string.format, string.format. Espresso, they got milk, it's an S dollar sign, percent point two F for the cost, and a new line. So then this is the espresso got milk, 
and the espresso cost. There we go. Okay, just trying to clean this up, make it look a little prettier here. Our label text plus equals string dot format p string dollar sign percent point two f for floating point and a new line there. Comma t got milk and my key cost. Oops, that does not need to be inside the parentheses. There we go. All right, and our bagel and our donuts, those were fine already. And then the total cost we should format as well. So string dot format percent point two f total cost. All right, so let's see if that works for us. Let's just do some pretty formatting because we want those two decimal places. People look at your receipts funny if you're missing a number. Right, we're used to seeing all down to the cent. Although maybe someday we'll round and get rid of pennies. Let's see, let's see. So we'll add a couple of things here. Let's see what we get. There we go. 0.15 or 1.50, 2.50, 2.00. Yeah, looking good so far. Right? Nicely formatted. Thoughts, questions, concerns, issues, trouble? It's okay so far? All right, so other things we can do, because this is a class here, right? Now, we don't actually have a constructor method defined right now, and that's okay. Um, there's this initialize. So when the class loads, none of this FF, FXML stuff exists yet. So we've defined it all, but it doesn't get instantiated or initialized until initialize runs. So in the constructor, we can't reference anything that's FXML. So they're all null to start. So we have to wait until initialize runs. But we could add a constructor here. Right? So we could have a public FXML controller. Right? And we should set all of our values here. Total cost to zero. We should set coffee cost. Coffee cost zero. We should set espresso cost to zero. Right, it's it's good habit here. Key cost zero. Give all these default values. Now you could define it zero up here. I'm not fond of that though. I really really prefer the constructor to do that sort of thing. Right? That's the constructor's job. That's where you expect to see values get their attributes. I'm sorry, attributes get their values. That was totally backwards. That's where you'd expect to see that. So I'm much more of a fan of doing it here. I know it works over there. It's just, this is just a style preference for me. I like the constructor to do that sort of thing. So anything that's not FXML, we want to initialize in the controller. So anything, initialize anything not in the controller, or not, anything not FXML in the constructor. I got too many words here, constructor. Okay, and then we'll, if you want to do other things with the FXML stuff, you can use initialize. It's going to start loading. Notice it's an override. It's going to start loading all the initialize stuff. Right? It's going to load all the FXML stuff, which is cool. Okay. I think we're okay so far. Hey, good morning, Scholar. We're having fun today. So maybe then when we check out, maybe now we want to add a little uh, way to pay, right? Let's do that. So we got our checkout button. Maybe let's do that over, I don't know, do you think over on the right? No, it might not be the best spot. We'll, we'll add another thing down here at the bottom. How about that? So say, hey, when we check out, Let's add an option here. So remember with this border layout, and again, you don't have to use the border layout. You can just throw things on here yourself if you want. I just like that it kind of organizes stuff for us. That's all. Um, let's add another box, another little container here. So I want another V box here. 
So I'm going to move checkout for a second here over to the side because I don't, don't want to get rid of it. I'm going to put another vertical box down in the bottom then. I'm going to put checkout back in that vertical box. But we do want it centered. Top center? Center? Top center. No, it didn't change. Didn't change. Where's my centering? B box. Layout. We want things to center. No, nope. check out to be centered. Can move it there if we need to, but tent display center. Uh, one of these should, should put it in the center for us. Center. No. Why is it not centering? That's annoying. That's sad. Huh. I can also say I don't want this quite as big either. Don't need it quite as tall. All right, so we'll add that. Sure, we'll, we'll add another. Uh, we've got a text, text field. So a text field is something they can type in. And add a text field. Um, nope, ignore. That's the wrong thing. Oh, never mind. Not that one. I want a regular text field. This one, I think, is the glue-on text field. And they have their own fancy styling stuff. This should be fine. So the text field. And one more button, then. And this button will be the pay button. We'll check out. We'll generate the receipt. Um... They can enter their payment information here. So we should maybe say, enter card number here. That's the prompting text. Notice it kind of like it's it's light gray and then it goes away, which is really cool. Yeah, why is this not centering? Let's, let's just Google that. So we have center items in VBOX, JavaFX. Oh, let's see. Ooh, it's a Java FX layout tutorial. Center. Nope, 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 nope. What happened there? What did I click? Let's try this one for dummies. Dummies.com. That looks uh like exactly what we want. Let's see, can we center? Center. Nothing. No centering. VBox tutorial. Yeah, the vertical alignment. I thought that would have moved it. Was it a separate separate alignment option I'm missing? All I saw was regular alignment. Didn't see a center. None of those here. That is weird. We can change it if we need to. Don't need extras. The layout. Now we can change an X and Y. That vertical grow is fine. To like center set alignment alignment on the notes inside the bounds yeah that's weird maybe I need like scene builder Java FX scene builder center in the box aha Center button in VBox. This looks like a good hit here. Yeah, because we don't want it. Oh, it is centered. So just scene builders is being dumb. 
right? No, this is the old run. That was the old one. I got excited for a minute there, but that that was not not true. Let's see. Try and run that. Set alignment. Find the size of the V box, maybe. Huh. You have to define its size first. That's interesting. For the vertical box, and then it might center. We've got a preferred width and preferred height. Use preferred size. How about that? Oh, no, that, doesn't, that looks worse now. That didn't do it. Hm. I'm getting confused. That's okay. Yeah. I shouldn't. It's confused. I'm confused. That's all right. Key, you can enter a card number here and pay. That's fine. I mean, ideally we would move those, but it's not cooperating at the moment. Set the size of the second. Huh. Yes, preferred width and preferred height. It should be fine. But it's not centering. Alignment to center. Wait, did we set the alignment to center? Thought we did. Alignment. Center. Oh, is this one center? Okay. There we go. Look at that. The center alignment on this one, not apparently what other, other center thing I sent. Not this layout center, the property center. There we go. All right, that, I don't know. I think it looks prettier centering here. All right, and then we need to give this an ID. This is our pay text box, our card number text field, sure. And the pay button then needs an action. Pay button, uh, pay button clicked. Okay, so now I'm going to have to generate the controller because, or make a controller again because I've added some IDs and I've added some actions. We're going to come back to FXML. We're going to make a controller. We should get a couple new things here, right? We get the, where'd it go? From down below. Oh, the text field, sure. Sure, sure. Maybe I'll put these at the top then. I don't want to keep putting stuff and keep having it generate in a funny spot. All right, so we'll put those at the top just for fun. So we got our card number text field. And when we click the pay button, we'll say thanks, right? Or we can clear that out or something. So we'll take the card number text field. We'll set the text to, I don't know, thanks. Sure, why not? And how about when we click receipt, then when we click checkout, right, our checkout button here, we'll set the card number field dot set text. Oh, we want to set the prompt text. There we go. For your card number. Okay. Because we'll put it back to this, like, enter your card number prompt, and then we'll tell them thanks here. Maybe we'll say set prompt text to thanks instead of a full text. Let's see. Let's see what we get. We're just pretending the payment's going to work here, right? Who knows? Coffee, whole milk, espresso, soy milk, tea, milk, do bagel, donuts. All right. And then enter your card number. One, two, three, four, five. Pay. Oh, it didn't change it. Didn't change it. 
Maybe we can't. Maybe we have to blank the text first before that works. Card number text field clear. Try clearing it first and then setting the prompt text. Maybe that'll work. Probably can't have text in it when you're setting the prompt text. All right, so we'll try coffee, espresso, tea, get some milks here, bagel, donuts. I'm hungry for breakfast now. Your card number, pay, goes back to thanks. Click we'll checkout, enter your card number. All right, that's looking much happier now. Cool. But now these really shouldn't show until we click checkout, right? So what we can do then, we can set them to be not visible. And then we click checkout, we want them to become visible. We'll take the, so I need the pay button then. Right, I need this to have an ID, this is my pay button, because I need to be able to reference it to set its visibility. So I'll come back and make the controller again. We'll say my pay button. Nope, pay button. Done. Oh, did I mess it up? Maybe I didn't save. Alright, save. Make controller. There we go. Pay button dot set visible. We'll set the true. Because it'll show up now. And then the card number text field, set visible, the true. And now it's actually kind of annoying to like make these things not visible here, right? Because then like I can't see them. So what might be nice is I'm just going to leave them as visible, but in my initializer, I'm going to go set them to not visible. So I'll take my pay button, set visible to false, and I'll take my card number Next field set visible, false as well. So when it runs, the initialize will set them not visible. That way I can still see them in Scene Builder. Just a, a preference, right? If you want to see them or not, um, either way is okay. Right, so we don't see them. When I click checkout, they pop up. You can enter a card number and pay. That sort of thing. Right, one, two, three, four, pay. Now the problem is that there's they're still here, but I don't know if they're going to order again or not, right? Right, how's everybody feeling about this? So we got a nice little receipt printer, made it look a little prettier, right? Have some event handling, we have a cool little text box here. We finally found the right center option, so it works there. And we have our cascading style sheet so that everything is in beautiful Comic Sans. Okay. All right. Awesome. So why don't we take a, a quick break here? Uh, we got a couple other things. We'll move on to some other controls we're going to look at, uh, but I want to start those and then have to take a break in the middle. Okay. We'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back in a little bit. We throw some music on here for you. I'm working on getting some other music too because I'm gonna get bored of this track already. But you know what, we can we can do that. Let's let's go find those. So it's ncs.io. There's no copyright sound. They have some good stuff. So we want to check out their library here. I gotta change this here. I need to have a so it's not even current song, is it? Let's see. Let me I'll just add another text here. Um, create new yep, text. Let's call this one CS music. This is music by CS. Or is it not? What do they want here? They had a particular thing they wanted. How do I credit the songs? Music provided by, here we go, in our stream description. I don't know if I can actually do that, though, very well. I'll put that in here, see how well that works. Spotify.ncs. Cool. We'll call that good enough. Wow, that's huge, though. We don't need that large a font. How about maybe, like, 48? Cool. Oh, we can go. Oh, 
Maybe we'll go a little larger than that. Let's go 72. All right. So that's NCS music. Don't need that one there then. All right, we're going to put break time on. Let's come back, say, 11.05. All right. And I just have to hit find their music now. Go back and hit play. All right, let's try some of these here. Maybe. There it goes. Kiss the rain. Ice runs in my veins. We'll play it safe. I don't belong with your nobility. Who died and made you king of anything? You think that I'm insane? It's your mistake.
Hey folks, oh, are we lagging a little bit? Alright, looks like I should probably download some of these instead of try streaming them at the same time, but it was fun to try something different. So I gotta see, um, find some good tracks here. They got a lot of stuff, which is pretty cool. You can, you can search through a lot of pretty cool um, DMCA free music, so that's pretty exciting. Anyway, we were looking at some of our controls here, having some fun. Right. Okay, we want to try a couple other controls here as well. All right. Oh man. Yes, I know there's a controller class there. All right. Initialize. Sure. That's fine. All right. So we've done checkboxes. We've done buttons. We've done radio boxes. Uh, let's try and add some other ones for fun here. Let's see, do we have, we have someone at the top here. So I want to add a slider here at the top. I'm trying to add a slider into the top here. Uh, you know, we probably want to give it a label though, don't we? So let's, let's, all right, so we take the slider back out. Let's put in a box. So maybe, maybe an H box. Maybe we'll do a horizontal box here at the top. Okay, and then in there, then maybe we put a label so we can tell people what the slider is going to be for. And then we put in the slider. The sliders are fun. Let's see how that works here. Throw that in the horizontal box. Uh, not inside the label, no, inside the box. Okay. We got a label, we got a box. We can, I think we can shrink down our vertical box a little bit here. It doesn't need to be quite so big. All right, so my label then, let's say this is going to be our, um, oh, we should have sugar, right? So sugar, sorry, we'll make this a sugar label. And then on the slider here then, oh, this, the alignment is off a little bit here. If you want to um, go center, center left maybe, I don't know, center, center's fun, why not center? So we need to set a couple properties. So with a slider, what you're going to do, you get a minimum value and a max value. So let's say the max is like 10 here and the block increment, let's go by one. So let's go from zero sugar to 10 sugar here. I'm going to show some tick marks um, with the tick labels and our major unit should be one. Minor unit, we don't want a minor unit. We just want majors. Okay, so I'm going to put a major unit of one. So we, as I slide it, Right, we want it to go the one sugar, two sugars. I, I hope you don't put 10 sugars in your coffee, but if you're not diabetic, it probably won't kill you, so that's okay. Right, no big deal there. No big deal. And we want to snap to ticks. Okay, so just for fun, we're not going to add all of these here. We, we could, you know, individually ass assign this slider to one or have sliders for all of them or we can come up with any sort of crazy UI we want here. Right, but we're just playing with some other ones, so sliders are kind of fun. We'll try and throw a slider in this how much sugar we want to add okay and we can do that same sort of thing we could make it only show if we pick 
one of these options here, right? So I need to give these IDs here. This is the sugar slider label. And this one is the sugar slider here. So when we initialize, then we can set them visible as false, kind of like that, that option there. So we initialize, where's my initialize here? Somewhere in here. There we go. There I can just jump. We'll take our sugar slider, set visible, set visible to false and my sugar slider label set visible also to false okay and then if i check something i want to, sh to show those so if i click the coffee button or the espresso button or the tea button right i want those to show right so then sure we'll just say on click we'll take our sugar label sugar slider set visible to true you know we could leave it on um, or we could put it whether or not it's checked or unchecked, but because we're sharing it right now, I'm just going to set it to visible true and we'll just leave it on for everything. You know, it might be nice if we had one of these sliders for each of these, um, but again, you know, sure. We'll, we'll put that as a note. It'd be nice to have a slider for each beverage type, right? Or really like, Hey, I want to add a coffee. What if I want to buy two different coffees? Right, I want to like add to order and keep this little shopping cart thing going. You can see like order entry is actually rather complicated. It sounds like it'd be really easy to do, but there's a lot of things that happen to it and trying to customize things and trying to make it an intuitive layout. Oops, uh, I probably should set that for each of these. I forgot. Let's do that for the espresso and for the tea. There we go. Right, close and restart. So any one of those that we pick, right, we can add some sugar to. All right. Ooh, a double star day at Starbucks. That's exciting. I've not been to Starbucks, like, in quite a while, uh, thanks, thanks to this quarantine. But there's the little local coffee shop around the corner I like to go to. All right, so coffee and our sugar slider go, shows up. Right, any one of them should trigger that to show up. Sure. And we should just be able to go pick how many sugars we want to be added. 10 sugars, oh my goodness, 10 sugars would be crazy, right? And again, it's not really, we're not showing anything, we're not adding any of that to the menu. We could, we could say, all right, coffee with so much sugar, right? How much whole milk, how much skim milk, how much soy milk, um, right? Cool, so the sliders are fun, right, for getting numeric values. The rest of our order should still work here. Right, and we just throw that slider around somewhere. And maybe it's a little funny with this, the border layout to put that up at the top. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe you'd want to put it like by the coffee. We could have our own little slider in there somewhere. Um, yeah. And we could fit it into the uh, into the left side if we wanted. We could make it an individual coffee slider instead of throwing it up at the top there. Could try that. Whoa. I made I'm upset scene builder. Okay. There we go. Alright, now it's heavier. Okay. Oh, I think I had the other app on top of it. Cool. So that one's fun. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, list view is kind of fun. It is kind of fun.
yeah, we can try, we can try list view. So the list view gives you a multi-select option here. So let's throw this one over maybe on the right side, a little over on the right. Let's see, do we get all styles, editable, all right. So the list view is a little trickier here. This is our list view. And you got all sorts of events that happen when you edit your list view. So we probably want, let's see, which one do we want to track? We want to look at, oh man, there's a bunch. Which one? Because we want to add, so you add a bunch of options to the list view, and then they can pick them as they go. When we select an item. We don't need any of those. Let's see what we can get. So we want to add some items in here. I don't see... Editable? No. We might not be able to do this in Scene Builder here. Just a little bit of a, a bummer. Yeah, nothing showing here. That's weird. Why didn't it show us that? That's okay. We'll give it a name. That's our list view here. And then we can go populate it with a bunch of options. So let's go back and make our controller. All right. And then when we initialize, we we'll gonna take our list view. And we want to add some options to it. So you got a couple options for how we set this one up. Okay. So we're going to call get items. And then we can add a bunch of things. So from here, we can add the items we want to add to the list view. So add all will let us give it a little list here. So things we might want to pick in the list view. Maybe this will be um, this in-store pickup. Maybe it'll be a drive up or curbside order, right? Curbside order or maybe delivery. So we'll try and add some of those options to our list view. Oh. Does not like us adding. Why doesn't it like us adding all those? There's our list view. Ah, list view. We need to tell it it's a type string here. There we go. So we need to tell our list view that we're going to put a bunch of strings in it here. And then we can add a bunch of strings to it. So we'll see. Cool. So I've got delivery, curbside, in-store pickup. Right now, this is only a single select. We're not doing any multi-select at the moment. We're just looking at, okay, these are my options here. Okay. And what we want, what we can do then is we can get the value of what's selected here with the selected item. So when we check out then, let's go and we'll see which one it is. Um, maybe what, after they enter the card number? I don't know. Uh, we can do it wherever. Um, we'll take our list view dot get selected item. Or no, get, get selection model dot get selected item. There we go. We get a single string back out. So this will be, well, I don't know, we'll add it to the label text. We're going to add a new line there then after our total cost. Add 
I don't know, order for what were our options there? Curbside, in store pickup, curbside order delivery. Sure. Let's add that to our little label text. So we should be able to get whatever option um, is selected here. So if you want curbside order, Oh, I set the text too soon. All right, this has to go up a little higher. This has to go up before we set the text to the label, to that one. There we go. All right, we'll stop and try it again. Okay, so we'll get a coffee with a bunch of sugar. Or, oh, null, because I didn't pick one. For in-store pickup, for delivery, for curbside. All right, we can pick something like that. So these list boxes are pretty cool. Um, and it lets us be a little more flexible as to what we're going to add here. So we can change the things that go in the box based on options we've checked. All right, so if we don't want to offer delivery unless a total goes over a certain amount, we can do those sorts of things. So it lets you be a little more flexible. Again, kind of we're, we're moving into more of the controlling it inside of code. Which is okay, right? Adding our items to it here. It's okay. Alright, so list views are a lot of fun. I don't think you'll need to use any list views for this this project, uh, unless you want to, but they're pretty fun. Alright. That combo box is pretty similar to a list box, except it's just a drop down. Combo boxes are fun. So it works similar to the list view, but it's just a drop down option. Um, depends, you know, just on how you want it to show. And then you can also make it so that a combo box you can type in, which is cool. Like you can add your own entry as well. So if it could be editable or non editable, um, totally up to you. We got sliders, we got text areas. Um, Menus we can look at at another time. I don't think we need to do anything with a menu at the moment. All right, so we're about done then with chapter 13, which is awesome. Let's just take a look here at our schedule. Throw this one back up here. Is anyone still around in chat? Did the stream die and I didn't notice? Or are you just, folks just quiet? Oh, yeah, it's bad bandwidth. What is going on here? Come on, friends. So the internet is just not cooperating today. It's okay, we're almost there. Almost there. Yeah, so it's mostly stable. Okay, sure. Sure, sure. All right. Cool. And we're gonna we finish up uh, chapter thirteen here for our GUI applications. Next week we'll spend a little bit of time on some miscellaneous topics. Uh, the week after that is totally reserved for working on the final project. And then on May third, again the goal is to try and get together synchronously and do some presentations. You can show off your game to everybody. Oh yeah, now it's saying it's unstable. Oh my goodness. All right, glad you're here. We'll just hanging out having fun then yep, so we're getting closer and closer to this may 3rd here if you've not started the final project definitely start it right you want to get ahead of this because you probably have other things going on at the end of the semester here and we'll work on getting this thing done so reach out if you have questions or concerns if you're getting stuck on anything let me know and yes study group today at noon right noon to one don't forget to go uh, chat with your fellow classmates in our amazing SI about the project, about other class content, about GUI applications, anything, really. And definitely encourage you folks to go um, meet your classmates. And if you haven't paired up with somebody yet, you're still welcome to. If uh, anyone wants to pair up on this final project, again, uh, I know it's a little tough with this remote learning environment, but we can make it work. And it is a lot of fun to work with other people. It's actually kind of lonely to write code all by yourself. So... Um, you, you uh, consider that as an option, okay?
So I think that's all I've got for today. And um, I will see you on Monday. We're going to talk a little bit about exceptions on Monday. And uh, we'll see what else uh, might come up. Okay? All right, folks. It's been fun. You take care. Let's see who we can go pester online here. And send you off their way. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We do pottery. Pottery's fun. See if I can find it here. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're heading over that way. Folks, take care. Um, let me know. i got office hours today, 1 to 3. got a couple of appointments already set up. Uh, but if you want to chat, let me know. Take care.